back here with us. It's good to have uh, William and Dwight and the baby with us tonight. It's good to have all of you. Praise God. Glad you're in the house of God tonight. I'd rather be here. I'm going to watch the ball game in tonight. Praise God. <laughs> I know some of you love ball games. I just ain't no ball person. Never have been. Praise God. I'll watch the last 10 minutes of it. That's enough for me. <laughs> That's enough for me. But I can tell you right now, we've got a God that loves us and cares for us. We've got a God that is going to bless us. Uh, I know the message I preached this morning, it seems like this tonight goes along with it, sort of. And I tell you, we're in the last days. And Jesus is coming. And, uh, we can see that by the things that are going on in the world. Uh, you know, just this week they called off uh, the uh, arms treaty with uh, Russia and uh, Praise God, the reason they had to call it off was because Russia was doing what they wanted to. And uh, they're going to get enough arms, you know, all of them are going to have enough arms. I was looking at the, one of the news uh, things this week, and it was talking about how China now had all these missiles where they could blow up all of uh, South Korea and all this over there. Uh, uh, it's it's uh, starting. It's starting quickly, and uh, they are getting ready with their arsenal because... You know, this is where the war is going to start at, right there. And uh, we better be careful in what's going on. We better be careful and watch and, and see and keep our eyes open and make sure that our hearts are ready to meet Jesus. Uh, you might say, well, I'm enjoying life right now. I'm doing things that make me happy. I'm going to tell you what, you better put those things down. That's right. Come on. Now, serving the Lord makes me happy, and I don't want to put that down. Uh, putting God first in my life makes me happy. But if you're doing things out of God's will, you better lay them aside because we don't know the hour or the time when <coughs> Jesus is coming back. And we better make sure our hearts are ready with Jesus. Turn with me tonight to, back to Acts chapter 12, if you will. Um, this will probably be a very familiar scripture to a lot of you. Uh, I've preached on it before. i tell you what, I want y'all to do this week for me, if you will. Uh, Brother Tom's been in the hospital a while now, and I want some of you to call up there this week. Uh, He's in room 120 and let him know you're praying for him. Uh, maybe that'll help him a little bit and encourage him a little bit. Uh, Fred's been dead, soon will be, in just a few days a year. So y'all can call Evelyn some this week and encourage her a little bit. She's going to have a, a, year, a week to go through this week. and Just give her a word of encouragement. You don't have to talk to her very long, but she likes to talk anyway. She ain't going to push you off the phone. So pray <laughs> to give her a call. I know she'd appreciate that, just knowing that you're praying for her. You know, whenever we lose a loved one, it's uh, hard. And, uh, Fred always, uh, we'd have a dinner out here, and she'd have to go up there and get his food for him. If we go to his house, she'd prepare all that food, cook for him, have everything set in the, right there on the table, and he'd say, honey, fix me a plate. And she'd go over and fix him a plate. Praise God. Thank God for people that love their spouses and take care of them. Uh, but, you know, he, he loved her, too. He'd do things for her. But, you know, I know it's tough on her. But I can tell you this much. There's going to be a day that if we live right, serve God, and put God first, all our loved ones that's going on that we're in Christ, we're going to be able to see them again. Yes. Thank Amen. God for that. Uh, I know uh, whenever you go on the other side, it might not be husband and wife, but praise God, it'll be good just to be able to see them again, won't it? Yes. Thank God for that. Uh, <laughs> I had one guy come here and sing one time, and he said him and his uh, wife was going to go down by the the river of life and sit down as husband and wife. And I thought to myself, I've read the Bible. I don't know whether that's going to happen or not. But I tell you this, they can go there and sit down by the river of life. They can enjoy the river of life. Praise God. And all of us can. Because, you know, there won't be no need for husband and wives on the other side. Everything's going to be all right. Thank God for that. And I'm so glad that God's already got it handled. I don't know everything, don't know everything about this word, but I'm so glad this word is real. I'm so glad yes. this word is true, and I'm so glad that we can have it in our hearts, locked up, and, and ready to go up. And I'm, I'm thankful tonight that Jesus allowed me to bow on my knees and say, Lord, I want you to come into my heart, and I hope you are too. This is a, a scripture here that's talking about a man that... They were trying to kill. They had already killed the James. And I'm going to read that scripture to you. Let me just go ahead and read some of it to you. Now about that time, Herod, the king, stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, and the, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of the unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison. 
and delivered him to four uh, quadrants, and these were many soldiers of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter therefore was kept in the prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. I just wonder how you pray. Uh, I've had people, to, you walk up to them and you say, so and so died. I mean, so they having so and so's funeral today. And they look at you and say, did they die? <laughs> and I say, yeah, they're having their funeral. And it'd be hard to have a funeral without them dying. But you ever had anybody do that to you? I have. I've had people do that to you. And it's sort, of out of, it's sort of out of text, you know. But it's sort of the way we pray. Sometimes we pray and we ask God for something. We ask God to give us things. And we ask God to bless us with things. And we ask God to bless other people with things. And we ask God to deliver other people from things that are in their lives. And, and we ask God to use us to be a witness to them. And then whenever God starts doing that, and they come and be a witness to us, we sort of act like, what's going on? And I just wonder how much faith we really have whenever we pray. Are we really faith, uh, believing in faith that God's going to do the work, that God's going to bless? This church here was praying, and the churches were praying that Peter wouldn't be killed. He's in prison, and he's already killed James, the, the brother of John. He's already, he's already killed him, and they know that Peter's life is in short terms. But they're praying for Peter to be delivered. Now, this is the church, and you say, well, the church has faith. The church believes and the church trusts God. And the church knows that God's going to bless it. The church knows that God's going to deliver. But do they? And I believe sometimes whenever we pray, we pray amiss because we really don't believe that God's going to do what we ask for. But I can tell you this much. We're serving a God that loves every one of us. He cares about every one of us. And He's going to deliver if we'll pray in faith and believe. He'll give us the answer that we need if we'll only trust Him. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side. I like this because I believe Peter had already prayed. I believe Peter had already trusted his God. Live or die, you ain't going to bother me. I can still sleep in between these two prisoners, and in between these two guards. Live or die, I trust my God. Live or die, he's going to deliver me one way or another. If praise God, if he don't deliver me out of this prison, he's going to deliver me out of your hands, and I'm going to be with my God. That's what we need to believe in our lives. Maybe sometimes, whenever we got things going on in our life, maybe we feel like that we can't be delivered. I'm going to tell you what this right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we can be delivered. Maybe not exactly the way that we want to be delivered, but the way that God wants to deliver us. And it's always the right way. If we'll trust Him and believe Him. Because He is a deliverer. He's a loving God. He cares for us. What you care about, God cares about. Praise God, I, I used to work in a furniture factory. I, I used to run a machine before I got to be assistant plant manager. I'd be over running that machine. I'd be praying, God, help me to do the right things in, in this plant that, that somebody will recognize that I'm doing the right things and I can make more money for my family. And, you know, God opens doors that no man can shut. God can move you up. I, I mean, I'd have, I'd have people come up to me and Asked me questions about other things in the plan, and, and I didn't even really know what was going on in a lot of ways, but God would give me the answer and praise God. That's the God we're serving. God, just because we're not, maybe don't have all the smarts that we think we ought to have, God's got the smarts and He can give them to us. He knows. And praise God, He can get you where you want to go. The reason that we're living below or where we really want to live is because we're not trusting this God. 
we're not believing this God. If you want to go high with this God, then praise God, you get your prayers high. You get your prayers. Whenever you get out on your knees and you start praying, you cry a few tears and you say, God, I believe you're my deliverer. God, I believe you're the one that can help me. God, I believe you're the one that can take care of all the needs in my life. You say, Brother Ken, I already know what I need. I'm going to tell you something. Most time, what we think we need ain't what we need. It's what God wants to give us. If we'll just trust God and say, God, give me what I need in this hour, then God will deliver us and he'll give us what we need in that hour. Amen. Amen. And you see, I look at Peter here, and he had so much faith to lay there knowing the next day he was going to be tried. Knowing the next day he probably would be put out there and killed. But he was still laying there between these two soldiers, chained, sleeping, giving him some rest. Not worried about what the world could do to him. Not worried about what old Harry could do. Not worried about what these soldiers could do to him. Because he had done what God had asked him to do. He'd been obedient. He'd been faithful. The reason people go down now and they, they're, they're timid. Uh, you go talk to someone whenever they're on their deathbed and they're timid and they're worried. Because, you know why? Because they haven't served God. They haven't really done what they know is right. They might have been in church, but they haven't really put God first in their life. They've let other things overcome what God wanted them to do. They take on the world. They take on the alcohol and the drugs and the things of the world and they put them into their heart and into their minds and they say well it's all right the bible says uh, paul says a little wine's good for the stomach and praise god they won't leave that little wine whenever they get a hold of that wine that taste becomes so good that they gotta have a lot of it that they want to lock it up and they want to have it in their house so they can get it every time they want it an alcohol drink oh a drink of alcohol won't bother you a little social drink won't bother you but it isn't long until you gotta have a little more to satisfy that habit inside of you because those habits will eat away at you and destroy that God that's inside of you and whatever people are laying on their deathbed they've let those habits and the things of the world pull them down and destroy their relationship with God and now they're laying there and they know they're getting ready to face God and they're so worried about where they're going to spend eternity and they're in a jerk they're shaking and they're worried I might shake I might move but praise God it ain't because I'm worried about where God's going to take me to because I know that I've lived the life that God wants me to live. I know that I've stood for him and praise God. I know that he's going to take me home and you can say the same thing. Amen. Hallelujah. Because I'm not bragging on self. I know me. I believe that I know one of us in here has got room to move up. <laughs> There's a God that loves us. But I'm so thankful for a man of God. Peter was a weak person. And whenever I look back in the other scriptures, he was weak. But praise God, whenever he went to that upper room and he got an upper room experience, the Holy Ghost fell on him. Praise God, he didn't start. He quit worrying about Peter and he started letting God lead him and guide him. That's what the Holy Ghost will do for you. It'll let God lead you and guide you. You won't have to worry about what's going to happen tomorrow because the Holy Ghost says, I'm going to take care of tomorrow. The Holy Ghost says, I'm your comforter. Don't you worry about what man can do to you. Don't you worry about what this sickness can do to you. Don't you worry about what anybody can do to you. Don't you worry about what that bill collector can do to you because you're serving the living God that loves you and cares for you and he's going to deliver you in these last days. Hallelujah. Glory to I love this part. <laughs> and the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. He was dead asleep. He was laying there and he was dead asleep. He wasn't worried at all. And so he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. So he was, he was laid down for night. You know, Peter always... Whenever he was out fishing, he always just wore his underclothes, and I reckon he slept the same way. He wanted to be comfortable. He didn't worry about what people thought around him. Praise God, he just wanted to be comfortable, and he just wanted to live in the Lord. Praise God. Thank God we can be comfortable with Jesus. We can have that comfort. The world can't have that comfort with Jesus. Because they don't want to give up the world. If you're going to be comfortable with Jesus, you got to give up the world. you got to give up the things the world offers. you got to turn over to God and put your trust in God and believe in God. I'm going to tell you something. If we'll believe in God and love this God and trust this God, He'll deliver us in these last days. Amen. And when He went out and He followed Him, and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel... 
But though he was saw a vision, when they were past the first, and so he thought he was he thought he was in a vision here. He, he thought he wasn't really going out of this prison, did he? When they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which openeth opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. He's safe now. God can go on and take his guard and go on and do about his business now because he's already got Peter safe. God has got him in a safe place. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectations of the people of the Jews. Now listen to this. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel, a young lady, came to hearken, named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, <laughs> She opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. Is this not us today right here? Wait on a few minutes. Listen to this. See if this ain't us. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. Listen, people. They've been praying in this house for days. For God to deliver this man and bring him out. They had been on their knees crying out to God and say, Lord, deliver our, our, your servant Peter because we don't want him to die. We need him. We need this blessed man of God. And now he's standing at the door. They're in the house trying to say, it ain't Peter. It can't be him. You go, girl, you're mad. You're crazy. It can't be Peter. You ever see somebody raised from the dead and everybody's looking around like, that can't be. That can't be. Praise God, I've seen that. And everybody looking at like, that can't be. That can't be possible. Well, let me tell you something. I've seen them raised. I've seen a lady raised from the dead. And it's possible. I want you to know that. With God, all things are possible. Yeah. You might say, Brother Ken, you were mad. Yeah. No, I wasn't either. Because I've told you before, whenever the paramedics come in, the woman had no heartbeat, no pulse. But praise God, she was talking to the paramedics. And it scared them to death because they didn't know what was going on. But I'm going to tell you what was going on. God had done this back down an angel. And he's done give her voice. He's done give her life. Even though you don't need a heart to have life, let me know that. Let me tell you that because as long as you got God, that's all that matters. God's able to deliver you in these last days. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I like this. And they said unto her, Thou art mad, but she constantly affirmed. That, that it was even so. Then said they, it is his angel. Now they in the house. Peter's standing at the gate. And they in there trying to figure out what's going on. Some wars are another. Somebody ain't got no faith. They are praying. But they ain't got no faith. Because if you got faith, you're going to believe. And if the girl says that Peter's at the gate. And he's knocking on trying to get in. You're going to run to that gate and you're going to look and you're going to believe God. But I'm going to tell you, we're sort of the same way. Sometimes whenever we pray and then all of a sudden whenever our prayer is answered, listen to this. We try to figure out how it happened. Come on. It's right. true. We don't believe that our prayer was answered. We don't believe that God moved us. But we try to figure out how it happened. Who opened doors where this could happen at our house? Who caused this to happen? I just don't understand it. And you've been praying all your, your weeks or you've been praying months for this to happen? Praise God. <coughs> These young boys, they come down to this altar Wednesday night. They don't know how many hours that some of us have prayed for them. Knowing that God was moving on them in this church. And then whenever God 
I looked down and I looked down. I turned my head back. I looked down again. I said, oh God, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you something. Whenever you see your prayers answered and you see God move, hallelujah, it's worth it all. And I believe without a shadow of a doubt that if we'll hold on to God, there will be a lot more in this altar praying oh, through yeah, and claiming yeah. Jesus as a personal Savior. And whenever you look up, you can believe and know without a shadow of a doubt that God is moving in the church. Yeah. But we're going to have to hold on to God and believe and have faith and trust. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> but Peter continued knocking. And when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. They couldn't figure out it was Peter. They, didn't, they couldn't understand how Peter got out of prison. They couldn't understand that God could dispatch down an angel. Praise God. I've seen a time that I could feel a car getting ready to hit me. <coughs> And I bet you some of you have felt the same thing. It's coming right at you. And all of a sudden, God's hand just moves that car just inches or just feet. And all of a sudden, the car's already gone on. And you're not even hit. Praise God. That's God. And sometimes we don't honor God for that. But we'll come to church and we'll pray, God, keep your hand on me. Lord, bless me. Lord, take care of me. And then whenever God does it, we don't know who done it. I can tell you right now who done it. It was your God. It was your God that you love. They're your God that you care for. He'll deliver us if we'll only trust Him. And not be like these people that were praying here. If we'll trust Him and say, God, thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. I'm going to pray even harder because I've seen you answer prayer. And I know that you're able to take care of it. Amen. But the beckoning unto them with a hand to hold their peace declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, Go, show these things unto James and to the brother. And he departed and went into another place. God's anointing, God's love and your faith will make a difference in your life. I don't know how you're living. I don't know how you stand before God. I don't know how you faith this tonight. But I can tell you this. We're still serving the God. Whenever old Elijah was standing out on the hillside, there stood old, them old guys over there that had cut their sails and tried to bring down fire from heaven. And, and they made out like they could do that. Old Balaam's men, you know, they standing over to the side and they were over there bleeding and crying and couldn't do anything. And then old Elijah just took those 12 stones and put them around there. Then he took that bull and cut it into pieces and laid it on top of those stones. And then he took all those barrels of water whenever he had dug that trench around that heart to God. Dug that trench and filled that Bullocks with water, fill those rocks with water, all the dirt around that offering with water, fill that ditch with water, went over to the side and prayed just about 62 or 67 words. I don't know, remember exactly how many words it off me. And whenever he got done praying, our God let fire fall from heaven and lick up the bullocks, lick up the stones. Lick up the dirt, lick up the water, and all was left was the solid ground. All the dust was gone because that fire was so hot, it quenched all of it. That's the God we're serving. And if you have faith in Him, the next time that you got a problem in your life, He's coming to your rescue. I read it in the Word of God today where, you know, being with God in one day is like a, what is it, like a thousand years. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we want our answer, our prayer answered in moments, mm -hmm. in seconds. And God says, hold on, pray a little longer. Pray a little longer. I can't remember who was praying. Some of you might can remember my mind. I, I didn't have it out tonight to preach, but God told him, said, whenever he's praying, there was some disturbance on the line. He's praying, he's seeking God's faith. I believe it was, uh, wasn't I can't remember who it was. I'll have to look it up for you if you want me to look it up for you. But God said there was some disturbance on the line. 
you had to pray a little more. In other words, you ever pick up your phone sometimes and maybe you're somewhere and these cell phones, you know, you might be in a place where it's dead and you hear that person clicking and nicking and everything else, but you can't understand what they say. Sometimes maybe that's what the devil does to our prayer. Maybe he's a hindrance on the line between us and God. And right before we're getting ready to give up, or right before we're not believing that God's able to answer the prayer, God's getting ready to answer it. So I'm going to tell you something. If you believe in this God, you hold on Amen. with everything you got and trust him because he's going to deliver. He's going to take care of you. He's going to bless you. And he's going to honor your house. Because Joshua says, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And praise God. God has given me this house. I'm the pastor here. And far as I'm got to say tonight, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. We're going to put him first in our life. We're going to lift him up here. And we're going to let him be Lord of the church. Amen. Tonight, if you really want a prayer answer, believe this God and trust him. And whenever it's answered, give him the glory. Right. Come on. He deserves it. No matter what happens in your life, you didn't do it. God does. Praise God. That's the reason whenever I know, whenever I bring a good message, I didn't do it. God done it. Right. Because if I brought the message, it'd be a flop. Whenever God brings it, it's a good message. And he'll deliver. He'll take care of what he's supposed to. Let God be Lord of your life. Stand with me. Praise God. Praise God. You're here tonight. Maybe you've Sort of been playing church, not really trusting God. Maybe you've been doing things you shouldn't do. The Bible says, God says, taste of me and see if I'm not good. And sometimes we taste of other things rather than God. And that's the reason you get a sour taste in your mouth that ain't God. You're tasting of the world. If you'll put the worldly things down and lift God up, God will deliver you. He'll give you the desires of your heart. I've heard people say, I'd love to give up this habit, or I'd love to give up that habit. You can give it up. It's easy. The only thing you got to do is give it to God. Oh, but God ain't going to want what I'm going to give to him, brother kid. No, he ain't even going to take it. But he'll take that taste out of your mouth. If you ask me to pray for you over it, I'm going to pray that you get sick next time you go touch it. That's right. Because if you want to give it up, that'll make you give it up. And I'm going to tell you something. If you want to get close to God, give up something for God. He'll bless you. He'll take care of you. I love every one of you tonight. I don't want to say anything to hurt you, but I want to say things to lift you up. If you've ever, if you've ever got close to God, do it now. Time is close. Jesus is coming. I, I think it's almost time for us to get us a ladder ready. So we can climb on the housetop. Amen. And start crying it, brother. We're getting old. It might be hard for us to get on the housetop. But praise God. We still got megaphones. We got other things. And we can holler it from the ground. I'm going to tell you something. I believe it's there. I believe it's there. I believe it's close. You say, well, wait a minute, brother Ken. It might be 10 more years yet. But how many people are going to be lost in that 10 years if we don't start spreading the gospel? If we don't really get it in our heart, we got loved ones, maybe children, maybe grandchildren, maybe friends that are on their way to hell. And some of the reasons maybe they're on their way to hell is the way that we've lived in front of them. Wouldn't it be a wonderful thing to do a complete turnaround and show them the God that we have inside of us now? Wouldn't it be a wonderful thing? If you're here tonight and you've seen the miracles of God, and maybe you really haven't looked out and said thank you, Lord, for one, or maybe you're not with God where you need to be, I'd love for you to come down tonight. I, I'm, I'm so thankful that this God allows us to do U turn. You might be on the wrong road tonight. He says, Narrow is the path. The salvation of God. Wide is the road 
to destruction. So if you're on a wide road tonight, you're in trouble. The road that we're on here as a church, we're on that pig path. You know where you can see the back of the car whenever you go around? Because a lot of times we have to go back to God and to use that applicant with him and say, Lord, I'm sorry that I did this. And we pick up and we get back on the right road and just keep going. That's the God we're serving. We stay on that narrow path with God. Narrow path. What if this lady, young lady, never she went to the door? Would have had faith and said, Peter, come on in. And whenever all the people come in, they would have said, Peter, we've been praying for you. We love you, brother. What kind of faith did they give unto Peter? What did they show Peter? They showed Peter there was no faith in the church. I want our church to have faith, sister. I want our church to be lifted up. I want to see a flame of fire run up and down the top of this rooftop with a Holy Ghost anointing that whenever people drive up and down the road over here, they can see God's anointing flowing on this rooftop. Praise God. We've had people drive down the road over here. I had one lady one time, Sister Harris, that used to come to church here. She's gone on now to be with Jesus. But she told me, she said, I come up the road one morning going to my church and said, God told me to turn in the gate, uh, turn in over there. And she never went back to the church where she used to come from because God put her right here. And the preacher called me up and said, I don't want you stealing no more of my members. And I said, brother, I couldn't have stole her if I wanted to because I'd never heard her name till the day she turned into the church over a lot over there and told me who she was. I said, I couldn't have stole her if I wanted to. I said, God sent her there. And I said, if you got anybody to argue with, you take it up with him. <laughs> take it up with him. Amen. See, that's the God we're serving. Yes. If you're here tonight and you need anything from this God, it's right here in this altar. Won't you go? Won't you go? Won't you go? Let us pray tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight, God, believing and knowing that you're King of kings and Lord of lords. God, you have your freedom in this church. God, I don't want you to dismiss, dismiss the one tonight, God. That the Holy Ghost has pricked their hearts or moved upon them to do something to get closer to you. God, but I want you to go with them. I want you to stir their minds, their soul, and their heart. And God, I want them to see their need of serving you and putting you first in their life. Hallelujah. Glory be God. And God, give them some sleepless nights, God. Oh, Lord, they'll be thankful one of these days. They not, might not be thankful now, but one of these days they'll be thankful for it. And God, help them to grow closer to you. But God, I'm the pastor of this flock, God. And God, I'm asking you right now, Lord, to help me grow closer to you. That I might bring the word. That it might be fluent of your coming, God. And your love for the people. God, that I might not look to the left or to the right. But I can stay in the center of your will and know, Lord, that you're able to deliver us in these last days. God, help me, Lord. Help me to serve you, God, and help me to help these people along the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. Praise God. It's good to have the visitors with us tonight. Frank's good to have you. Uh, brother's good to have you. Wife and child with you tonight. Thank God for every one of you. It's good to have every one of you. It's good to have the one that's sung tonight to you. Bless me and you. I don't want